last three or four months, Google Expeditions became available to the public. Before that, it was kind of a uh, program that they would do themselves. They'd come around to different schools and um, while they're piloting the program. But now they've released it, and it's actually pretty useful. It's a great way to get into virtual reality. Um, it's not super expensive. The app itself is free. So uh, I wanted to just show you, give you a little example of how it might work in a classroom. Um, the great thing about Google Expeditions is that it will run on any Android device. Um, it states on the website it's coming soon for iOS, and that would make it easily available to, to anyone that has a smartphone. Um, the way I would use this in my middle school classroom is basically have the kids bring their own device and load up the app. And if you as a teacher provide the viewers, then uh, there's not actually a ton of cost at between $20 and $30. We're going to do this. Yeah. So um, we've got Google Expedition started up here. Uh, my son's going to help us out. and. Really, to run Google Expeditions, you have to have two devices. We're using a tablet, and then that'll be the guide, and then we follow here on the on the Gear VR. Um, but actually, on the Gear VR, we're just running this in uh, Google Cardboard mode, so it's just running like a normal Google Cardboard. And then we'll go ahead and pick one here. Let's do the San Diego Zoo. Ooh. Once the start button goes, I start seeing it on my screen. And, and I see it in front of me in the virtual reality. So the little smiley face right here shows where each uh, student is looking. And then we also have this nice little script. So if I pull this open, um, I could just read this to my students. Welcome to the Conrad Previs Polar Bear Plunge at the San Diego Zoo. The Conrad Previs Polar Bear Plunge exhibit was created as an interactive way for parents and children to discover polar bears. Long name. So there's awesome uh, questions to get your kids thinking here. I'll try the intermediate one. Polar bears live in the Arctic, where it is extremely cold. Where else in the world do polar bears live? Uh, Greenland. Yeah, good guess. Huh. So because they live in places like Alaska, Canada, Russia, Greenland, and part of Norway, these snow-living creatures can still hunt even when the temperatures drop really low. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of different targets. So if I hit this one, so an arrow will pop up and it directs me to what my dad wants me to go. see. Yep, so Arctic conditioned water. Polar bear is well adapted to live in extreme Arctic conditions. A two to four inch thick layer of blubber helps these bears stay warm and maintain a fairly consistent body temperature. Tundra habitat. And I can easily see if someone's off task and not looking where they should. And then uh, let's, let's jump over to another exhibit. So this is the caravan safari you're going to see. Loading. Travel in the back of a covered open air safari truck to visit field enclosures. Get an up close view of Asian and African birds and mammals with the opportunity to feed giraffes. Why do so many people look up to giraffes besides the obvious reason? The long and short of it is that they're a wonderful example of nature's creativity. The safari park is home to uh, reticulated and Uganda mm. giraffes. They share their field exhibits with a variety of antelope and rhinos, among other species, just as they might in the wild. Do giraffes have a spotted pattern? Spotted pattern? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was a beginner question. Too easy. Okay, now it's rhino feeding time. Are you ready? Yeah. Rhinos are the second largest land mammal. Whoa. Elephants are bigger. There's a white rhino. Rhinos may look tough, but their skin is actually quite sensitive. They can sunburn, and biting insects bug them. That's why they like to wallow in mud. It puts a layer between their skin and the sun and insects. Let's just jump through, because we got to see the elephants. So I'm going through these kind of fast, but you guys can get the idea of just the interactivity. Of course, in uh, virtual reality, it's a lot more immersive. And I think that was our last of the exhibits. So it's time to leave the zoo, say goodbye, 
Alright, so that's your brief intro on Google Expeditions. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, really, you gotta try it out for yourself. Um, hard to do with just one device, so fire up on two devices, have one be the guide, and then you can have the other uh, follow along. You could also do this without the virtual reality aspect. Kids can definitely on their tablets still kind of pan around and see those uh, photosphere 360 degree pictures, um, which is kind of a cool thing in and of itself. But definitely virtual reality makes it that much more immersive. Um, really cool that Google made this uh, available to everybody. Um, really exciting that there's I think over 200 locations to choose from. Um, and hopefully before long we can start creating our own to take our kids on whatever field trip we want. Anyway, that's it. Thanks.